I think it is time in this country to quit making national heroes out of those who steal secrets and publish them in the newspaper. I didn't consider myself a whistleblower. I was someone who was trying, along with many people, to, to stop this killing. It was a moral issue of the, the first order. There is no clean, quick, or easy way to win these wars. South Vietnam's losses in combat are ten times as great as those suffered by the United States in Korea. The war was brutal. You know, millions of people died. Three million people died. And there was a great deal of anger. I had worked in the Senate when the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, which authorized the war, came in. And it seemed to me outrageous that this was a war that had been brought forward in a way that was dishonest and um, callous and brutal. And uh, it just was immoral and it had to be stopped. And the first thing to know about Dan Ellsberg was that he had made the decision that he was prepared to go to jail for life. That was a likely consequence and was prepared to do it. We had mutual friends and Dan and Patricia invited me to dinner. Uh, we hit it off. I mean, I, I liked him. I think he liked me. We were both pretty intense about lots of theory of change and theory of war. And so it was a good dinner. Very shortly thereafter, all of this unfolded quite unexpectedly. Daniel Ellsberg, ex-Pentagon employee, made history by leaking to the New York Times the Pentagon Papers, a top-secret study of Vietnam policy. Pentagon Papers showed again and again how decisions had been made that were knowingly uh, dangerous and not likely to succeed. And the FBI was trying to suppress this. The government was trying, the Nixon administration was trying to suppress this. I didn't want to discredit the man as an individual. I couldn't care less about the punk. I wanted to discredit that kind of activity. How do we actually get the papers to the newspapers so the public could read about this? I helped to arrange for the distribution of the papers, and they had to be delivered to reporters who would come to Boston or Cambridge. And the question was how to do that, knowing that the government was trying to find the papers and trying to find Dan Ellsberg in particular, who was the main target. So one of the graduate students who was helping us um, would take a bundle of, of papers, and uh, one of the reporters was said to go to this hotel room and just wait, wait for a call. And so a call was made, and uh, I basically said to him, open your door, and the box was there that had been left about two minutes earlier. I needed some sort of a code name, so I, I called myself Mr. Boston. The strategy was simply to go from public telephone to public telephone, uh, never using the same one, and moving, you know, in the Boston area, the Cambridge area, many little cities, so that you wouldn't be traced. Uh, and it seemed, seemed to work. Harvard Square used to have a row of pay telephones. There were maybe 10, 12 of them in a row there. These phones must have been bugged because a number of police cars came zeroing in on the phones after I'd left. The newspaper had printed excerpts from thousands of classified Pentagon papers detailing the hidden history of the Vietnam War. Dan wanted to get the papers out as fast as he could. And once the New York Times was stopped, uh, his notion was, let's give them all massive amount of material uh, to the next paper. And I urged him not to do that. We could take it bit by bit around the country for smaller pieces so they could study them and read them. Uh, maybe we could get the whole thing out piece by piece by piece and thereby get the story out. Uh, that's what we did. We tried to keep it in the public eye. There have been thousands of articles, movies, documentaries about the Pentagon Papers um, since 1971, now of course major movie, and yet your name has never once come up in connection with Ellsberg's break-in and distribution of the, of the papers. How, first of all, have you stayed quiet for so long? Well, I 
it's not, not difficult to be quiet about it. Uh, there's nobody that needed to know a particular occasion, and I didn't see an occasion that made sense to talk about it. But the movie has uh, attracted attention to this subject. It's not the full report, but it's over 4,000 pages of it. But there are no page numbers. Yeah, that's where the top secret stamps were. My source had to cut them off. That's one side. The other side is the dangers of this, this administration and this government. And uh, whether it's in Korea or in Africa or in the Middle East, uh, the decision-making process is, is uh, frightening and, and uh, costs many lives and could cost many, many more lives. So it's an important time to, to raise questions. I think people need to think about what they can do, even if it's very small, because it encourages others, and that's a really important process.